All right, let's move on to uh, some non Xbox news. It's kind of it. You could play it on the platform as well. Uh, we're going to be talking about Marvel's Avengers, the DLC, and state of the game, as well as another broken game, uh, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven and the Patch one hundred one. Yeah, you, uh, you're yeah, the only yeah, yeah. that you would bring this so, news here. <laughs> so honestly, like I, I just wanted to talk because it's something that's been going on in the community, and a lot of people have been having this conversation. You know, mm -hmm. I cover Avengers on my channel, so it's something that I've been following very closely. Uh, and it's the uh, the lack of content for Avengers. We got one post launch expansion in December, like early December, and we've gone through all of January without a singular update that was like concrete enough as to when we're going to see Hawkeye, when we're going to hear about a roadmap, when we're going to learn more about what we can expect from this game down the line. And I know that the developers are going through, like, it, this is all not easy, you know, although the games industry is booming and everything is doing well under the circumstances, it's still not easy to be doing what they're doing working from home. So I imagine that it's clearly a, a difficult time. But I guess the way that I was looking at it is pre-delay on their DLC, the plan was to have Kate Bishop in October and then Hawkeye to follow in November. So I guess in my head, I expected if they were delaying the Kate Bishop DLC, then it would still be kind of within that same window that we would see Hawkeye, you know, right. within that yeah. one month. Um, but it looks like that's not going to be the case. They're taking a little longer on that. And then obviously they're still trying to fix the game. It's still littered with bugs, got a lot of issues, performance issues. There's a next gen update coming at some point we know spider-man's coming exclusively to the playstation and i guess i wanted to throw it to you guys to let to, to ask like is it too late now for avengers is there a comeback story for this game i'm not in it yet no no, no. what <laughs> what yeah. I, yeah. I feel like i i oh my god it pains me to say this because i love the Avengers so much and I had so many high hopes for this game and I love the campaign mm -hmm. but I feel like there is no coming back uh, for this game just because the type of gameplay um, the multiplayer aspect and you know kind of it's it's fun but like you don't have anyone on the servers but Caboose right now playing um, and you need the missions to uh, play with your friends you need new missions I just mm -hmm. feel like that's very for very much for a niche audience. Um, I don't see if they were to make that great, it being like break headline breaking news. Like I don't know how they'd be able to market that to the average gamer. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so and it's kind of like what we saw with No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky had all these promises. It was broken on release. Then they did their patches a year and a half later. It was mm -hmm. great, um, but it's a very niche audience. Mm -hmm. Right. So I feel and I, like- And I don't think an Avengers game sustains on a niche audience. You know, a game like No Man's Sky exactly. is lower budget, doesn't have to worry about the IPs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it's like when you, and you know what's gonna be happening behind the scenes, right? Like yeah. this is the Avengers. Mm -hmm. So they're not gonna have an Avengers property be a niche game. Right. Even if they traction some of the community, it would probably like they'd close up shop real quick to work well, on the next Avengers game. Wasn't okay, there so a that's... story about that? About how they didn't make the money that they wanted to make on that game? They lost yeah. a lot. It of underperformed. Money. Yeah. Like yeah. 63 million lost or something like that in the game, which is rough. And mm -hmm. but but I wonder because we know like Hawkeye is coming, like that's in development. Spider-Man is in development. So I wonder like, do they finish up with those and then call it quits? Or are they just kind of like, it, does Marvel just make enough money hand over fist where they're like, uh, we lost some money, but we have, like, you've put too much development time, so we have to, like, release some of this content. Like, I wonder what the situation ends up becoming for Avengers. And I guess to tie in a little bit of the cyberpunk conversation, you know, they recently came out with patch 1.1. This right. is their first big major update for the game. And, like, I pose the same question. Like, is it too late for cyberpunk to have, you know, anybody put any trust into the game because i also heard that apparently with the newest patch another game breaking bug was introduced yeah, i don't yeah. know what it was but yeah. i don't know steve if you heard about it or if you know what it is i but... just read the headline i saw it right before we went live i didn't get yeah to it, uh, yeah too much into it uh but i will say just going back to avengers quickly i think it's way too early to tell uh because really? i think i do i i really do because they're doing the smart thing of just keeping their head down right now 
they they know they're mm. they're not they're not delivering right Why? now. But the thing is, is that announced those DLCs were coming. We need they, get them. that's true. But we we've seen it before where I. I Sure, we can draw the comparison to uh, Cyberpunk right now, and CB, CD Projekt Red just won't stop talking. They're they're not working hard enough, but they <laughs> but they will. Like every week, I see some sort of like yellow tweet, and it's just some sort of new either apology or update or something like that. Crystal Dynamics has just gone off the radar, and I think that's for the best. We see that work very well for No Man's Sky, where they just went under the radar, they stopped talking, and they just delivered when they came out. I think the most telling thing will be. The next time that they do, uh, was the, they call it war tables? Is that yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the next war table, if they come out and they say, okay, here is our plan. Here is the next gen update. Here is Hawkeye. Here is the thing. If they don't come out with that, then yeah, I, I think it's a little a little concerning. Yeah. But I think it's still too early to tell because I, I do think that they're working on it. They're not just ignoring the problem. Mm. You do have a point. Like I'm thinking of DC. DC Online is still mm-hmm. going. It's a very niche audience, but they Ten have years. New content. Yeah. I know it's crazy, and they have new content. And some of the content, like they go, they go deep into like comic book lore, and you're just like, whoa, they're they're doing this story. Like that's yeah. so random, but it's perfect for their niche audience. The way that, and I, I don't know Crystal Dynamics and the deal they have with Marvel for Avengers, if it's an exclusive deal, kind of like what we saw with Star Wars and EA, right? Like, do they have it where they're developing all these games? I don't think so. Don't so think maybe Marvel's like, all right, you do whatever you want. We're just not putting our marketing power into this game. Um, and, and, you know, you guys can market that. Yeah. We work on the next Avengers game. I, I think too another big the problem Avengers. for yeah, I think another big problem for Avengers um was that they clearly like their plan from the get-go was all the post-launch content would be free. And I actually think that that is great. Like mm-hmm. the Kate Bishop Hawkeye DLC came out and for a free update, like I, I put like 2 to 3 hours into it. It's a whole character that you can level up with a new move set and everything. I thought that that was pretty decent in terms of content to be provided for free. Like it just literally is a download, but to supplement for that, they have the microtransactions, they have the skins that you can buy from the marketplace and stuff. But I think even that like isn't drawing anybody in. I don't know anybody out there who's really spending additional money on this game. They haven't done anything like MCU skins or anything, which I think is insane. Like that's just the easiest cash grab known to man is if you just made a skin pack based on their MCU designs. Um, but like, even then, like they're, they're probably not selling a lot in terms of the microtransactions and, you know, their, their little additional currencies to buy stuff from their marketplace. So what money is this game making? If it's undersold so much, if it's underperformed so much to the point where how much more are they going to lose to pump into the game to try and keep it alive? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I I feel like, um, there's two sides to this for cyberpunk. I think obviously they have more to lose if they don't make that game good as it is like they have to continue working on that game like they can't for them it it could never be too late to make that game perfect because there was so much on the line think of all the marketing yeah. for adventures mm-hmm. because of the ip attached to it they literally could close up shop and do a marvel's avengers part two or rename it something and make that game 10 times better and that yeah. was be successful because people yeah. will still pay attention to that. Um, yeah. Cyberpunk, I don't even know if they could pay Keanu Reeves to come back and do marketing for that if they were. Like, how do you market that? You spent all your time marketing this with Keanu Reeves. The only logical thing I could think to explain the glitches in this game is to make that a part of the story. Like, oh, your upgrades were all glitched out. That's why the world you were seeing was glitched out. And now there's this new story arc where you have to fix it. Like. How do you how do you explain <laughs> as the game is, you know, um, that that this, this is OK. It was OK that it was like this. And now it's yeah. better. Like, yeah. the only, or the other way is when they do eventually come out with multiplayer. That needs to really be top notch. Can we just talk about the timeline for a second? Like I stopped playing. I was playing a Series X, got seven hours in and said, screw this. I'm waiting for it to be fixed. I mm-hmm. haven't touched it since. And oh, wow. if they're going to come to me and say, hey, multiplayer's out before they fix the freaking bugs in the game that I've already spent $90 on. It's not cool. What if they make multiplayer free to play? I don't care. Really? I don't care. Yeah. I already gave them the money. I don't care about yeah. multiplayer. I want the story of Johnny Silverhand and V. That's uh, it. Yeah. I want yeah. I want to finish yeah. that. I want to see and I want to experience what everybody on PC got to experience. 
Right now, it looks uh, like poop. <laughs> yeah, I just I, I so I played through it. Um, Cyberpunk. I I, I played on Series X as well, and. I, I played through it mainly in part because I got through a bit of it and I was running into a lot of bugs and people were telling me like, oh, if you're playing on next gen, it shouldn't be that bad. If you're playing, it's it's okay. You know, like it's yeah. just, the, it's just the last gen console version. That's like terrible. And I was like, all right, I'm going to play through this whole thing and I want to see. And there were just endless instances. Oh, yeah. where the amount either- of tweets that I sent with like me recording bugs. I had this one yep. where the dude was in the dude I was fighting against was in an elevator and he was like yep. all mecked out and all this stuff. And I'm shooting at him actively shooting at him, and he's glitching back and yep. forth and back and forth. <laughs> yep. And then finally yep. I kill him and he's still glitching on the floor. And I'm like, why yeah. would I put myself through this? All I'm doing is just tainting my experience. I yep. will just wait. Yeah. I am willing yeah. to wait to have the game because Camille knows I I have been waiting for this game. Yes, for way yes. too long. Oh man, the content that we had in the works. Yes, we had I, so many plans, and that's the thing. I feel like, especially for you, because you dedicated so much to the lore of the game. Right. So I understand your pain where you're like, you don't care about the multiplayer. Yeah. Um, however, for myself, who I play multiplayer games, right. I play, you know, first person shooter games. I would I would try it out. And if it's free to play and I could get my other friends on it, I think the name Cyberpunk, although it was a flop for people who didn't play, if the multiplayer was free to play, they would give it a try just to see if it's as crappy as everybody else says. How many people didn't play that game, though? What was it? How many different how many copies of that was sold in the first week? Like Mm -hmm. how many of us that play video games did not experience the absolute crapshoot that that was? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's a really fair point. And I love, I love the fact that C, uh, not CDPR, um, uh, uh, Crystal Dynamics and uh, the folks behind No Man's Sky, um, how they kind of like took it on the chin and are just yep. trying to fix it and trying to make better. Yep. While yep. when the cyberpunk folks come out and it's like an oh me, oh my story. It's yeah. like, we're all dealing with the pandemic, guys. We're all dealing with the same work from home stuff. We understand that these things are hard to develop for. You bit off too much that you could chew. Yep. You were too cocky because of your previous game, which, by the way, came out buggy. Yeah. So yep. maybe, maybe you should also bow your heads, apologize, and then come back to us with something that worked. And, yeah. And and you look you look even at that that video that they released, um, where it was from was it the uh, the president at at CDPR or, or yeah, where and then um, and and then he almost tried to like shift the blame onto QA on testers QA? very subtly, Screw and it's you. like oh yeah. oh that is definitely a textbook example that's of like toxic. just yeah. stop talking like yeah, yeah. that's toxic and, <laughs> and the thing is like Leah, I'll, I'll pose this question to you because i know you're so dedicated you did mention that you just want the game to work but is yeah. it enough for the game to work right now so you've probably gotten spoiled from some things or some missions within the game from people who have played who's had a good experience say they if they were on pc for you now is it even good enough to play that game glitch free or do you want something more and what would that be i feel like i've had enough experiences with games that i didn't jump in on day one that i still had a a you know fantastic fantastic time with witcher 3 mm-hmm. is actually one of the good ones i only played that last christmas that holiday right? Oh, right just before when i was like okay i need to understand what cdpr is all about i want to really get myself invested in this if we were going to go down that route and do something that was dedicated to cyberpunk and even though i knew inklings sometimes and it's funny because kat brought it up in our our podcast episode she she found that with a um assassin's creed valhalla she was kind of losing interest but then got a little bit spoiled was like "Ooh, that's kind of interesting and now is looking forward to Mm. hearing the full story i'm more in that camp right now where i was like i know it's there i've seen the photos i've heard the whispers Mm -hmm. but i want to enjoy that like those Mm -hmm. who have a high-end gaming pc which i thought i purchased in my xbox series x for this game right so but unfortunately, I mean, and going back to this whole apology video, uh, not to keep it too long, but I mean, even the timeline of of how they're going to roll out content, like we just got patch 1.1. I think they said next month, even maybe even March 1.2. And then they got like a, fr- a couple free DLCs coming in and then next gen optimization. Come on. Like, yeah, no, for me, that should uh, be top priority. Like, top priority. It should be fix the current, like the current 
build right now, work on optimization for next gen, and then start doing yeah. additional content. Because for yeah. me, I've put in close to 70 hours of uh, Cyberpunk. Like I, Overall, I've kind of enjoyed my time with it. I don't think it's, it's a crapshoot as a lot of people have pointed out. Um, I haven't had too many bad experiences. But that being said, like I've experienced 90% of that game. Like I have all but two achievements left to just finish up my time with that game like by the time that optimization comes through i'm over it like yeah. i'm already yeah. over it right that's now why like, I stopped. I, that's yeah. why i stopped yeah i was seven hours in just met johnny and i was like i don't want to play this way right and i uh, heard stopped and every time there's a new update like this new patch i was like maybe is I this should. the one and then is i hear the about one? the game breaking <laughs> up and i'm like no i will wait and I, yeah. I think that's kind of concerning too i i jumped in for the 1.1 .1. i was like let's just see let's just see like what it brought to the table nothing i couldn't tell it anything maybe on like a base xbox one you'd be able to see differences but i couldn't tell anything on a series x yeah yeah i know that game is just the absolute worst tried well i played it and it glitched on me twice when i was just doing my cu character customization I had to memorize all the options going mm, no. to it the third time it was so upsetting um, yeah. playing that game but for me i feel like it's just not worth it like it's not worth it to just come out with a good build of that game they need yeah. to tie in something else, um, I mm -hmm. think, to get people to pay attention more and maybe them focusing on all their like their DLC, all that stuff before actually optimizing the game for next gen is to keep their investors engaged and hopeful. Um, but I don't see that panning out and how the president was uh, reacting or, you know, putting out that excuse out there. I think they're just overall in a toxic place. And unfortunately, Cyberpunk 2077 just needs to die and CD Projekt Red needs to work on something new if they're still alive uh, coming out of this, which yeah. is so unfortunate. Yeah. Um, but we'll just have to keep watching the news on this one because it, it's not over. <laughs> no. no. Every week there's a new Every story. Week. Oh, and yeah. now let's turn to the podcast section that is all about CD Projekt Red again. Yeah. Every week. Yeah. I want to actually, has anyone heard Keanu Reeves talk about the He's not going to. I don't think I going. want him to. Uh -huh. I want him to. I just want him to. He's so wholesome. I don't find, I don't think he'll talk about like anything bad, but he'll just put out a like really cool, savage he, comment. He probably doesn't even really understand kind of like what's probably going on. <laughs> well, no, I yeah. think he understands if a game's glitchy, that's, that's pretty yeah. easy to understand. Sure. But I just want to know his thoughts on like the whole marketing and the failure mm. of the game um you know if he was though. disappointed and yeah. It, yeah it's not it's not him he's never really come out you don't you don't ever see him really in the news for gossip you don't see him like he's just not that like they had that whole he had this old revival of like him being the coolest thing since sliced bread which is true like he he's is. amazing right yeah. but that's part of his mystique is that he is this kind of to himself individual he does these amazing performances and things and i think he's going to be phenomenal in the game as acting in the game but like he has nothing to say about the how development's working and the progress in the yeah. game he just oh no in, i don't care about that out. i just yeah. want i just want keanu reeves to give, give us some gold you know i just want more keanu um because i know uh i was looking forward to the keanu experience but the glitches just made it worse you know yeah. like made it made it a bad one but mm. yeah we'll keep watching keanu if you're out there and you want to come on the squad cast give us the goods on oh, what uh, happened with uh, uh, bring or, back or, or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I will come back. Let <laughs> just let us know. We'll have you back too. Uh, but for now, that's it for the show. Unfortunately, Keanu couldn't be here today, but maybe next time we'll have him. We had Leah, who is awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. You had so many great insights on all these topics. What do you have coming up? I know you have girls on game. What are you working on? And we're yeah, totally I mean, like, it. the podcast has been going full force. Um, it is very much a therapeutic experience every week to get to chat with uh, the crew. We release our episodes on uh, Monday, so there is a fresh new episode. We talk about some of the things that we talked about here today, too. Um, so you get a little bit more details from Catherine and Ali and uh, Simon as well. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much our focus. You can always go to girlsongames.ca for more details. Follow us at the girls on games on Twitter. And then if you just want my two cents, I'm at Leah Jewer. All right. Awesome. 
now Caboose, you you you're really trying to have the Marvel's Avengers universe going strong. Can we expect some more videos on your channels this week? Uh, if they want to give us some updates, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> still waiting out on that Mortal Kombat trailer as well. Looking out to see what we're going to learn more about that movie. Um, and then we're doing the streaming. You know, I got my uh, Mortal Kombat 11 tournament going still. Champions of the Realms 2 every Wednesday and Friday. You can see that on either my Twitch, twitch.tv slash caboose. Or you can check me out on Twitter and Instagram at caboose ek. Awesome. Thank you, Caboose. Now, Steve, what juicy articles do you have on the website? Just Hitman 3. That's my that's <laughs> in, the, in my uh, peripherals for so long now, so it's just going to be a week of just more Hitman 3 content going up. Oh, my gosh. I feel like you have to kind of do a deep dive of Hitman here on the Squadcast. I would love to. Oh, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's try week. to plan something. Yeah, next yeah. week. I mean, there you go. That's his topic yeah. next week. Look forward to it. <laughs> Stuff. Yeah. Uh, Steven, where can everybody find you? Yeah, you can find me uh, mostly on Twitter at svigvari. Uh, I post all my uh, content there as well, so you can follow all the articles uh, I write. So, yeah, check yeah. me out there. Yes, I'm going to be reading um, some of those articles in prep for our Hitman discussion next week. As of course, you at home can find all the articles on Squad at uh, squadstate.com, as well as stay up with all of our um, latest news at Squad State on Twitter. For myself, I'm probably just going to be playing more COD. So if you want some COD updates and random memes, check me out at This Is Camco. For now, that is it, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next Monday in peace.